Hey everybody, so I want to give you a quick disclaimer about the video that you're about to watch. I shot this video on two different cameras. I shot it on the one that I'm holding right now, and I shot it on a GoPro 9. I shot the majority of all of the beginning of the footage on the GoPro 9. The problem is, I had it on the wrong setting for dim lighting, and I had it on a low quality setting to save space on the memory card that came with it. The problem is, the quality did not come out very well until I switched to the same camera that I'm using right now, and then the quality got really really good the problem is I seamed all those videos together so that it would be seamless and then something happened to that video and it got corrupted but I have enough of it to show you sort of the process that I went through the lumber that I used the beams that I had created so I hope you'll stick with me even though the quality is not really good it's going to get better and better because I finally figured out how to adjust the GoPro 9 to do 2.7 or 4k or even 5k video so, hope you enjoy this video, and just keep in mind, <laughs> the quality's not terrific at all times, but I hope that it's going to keep getting better. Thank you. So I've been considering building a bridge for a long time over here. And I wanted to give you some footage of how this is coming along, this project getting started. As you can see, I've got a little bit of concrete poured in the ground, barely leveled out. I've got some concrete over there and it's barely leveled out. Um, there's the famous ditch that we're going to be crossing. So this is going to end up being 10 feet wide and 12 feet across. And the reason that I wanted it 10 feet wide, which may seem like overkill, I got to thinking about what I might possibly use this for. I know that I want to be able to cross over this with a utility vehicle. I know I want to be able to use my small tractor, it's a very small tractor, uh, and cross this. And then it's possible even that I want to be able to use my utility vehicle or my tractor to pull a trailer across this. So once you take the measurements and you start figuring size, you are almost eight feet wide this is what we've got going so far, and I'll show you some of what I'm working on here in a minute. Uh, the used on this project to, to bridge the gap there that you see. So, all right, so here's some of the material that I'm using um, for the base. I'm going with two by eights, which I think are going to carry the load pretty good. These are two by eight by tens, uh, ten feet long, two by eight, and everything else is two by eight by 12, cut down to the length that I need it. And so what I'm gonna have on this bridge for supports is four individual boards spaced out. And then I'm gonna have these beams that I've built and give you a good look at what they look like where I have put a block of four by four in here. So you got a two by eight by 12 with a block in here nailed in really good on both sides and you got a block in the center you can see the block in the center and then another block down here and so i've got three of those that i've made and so there's going to be three double beams and four single beams and then i'm just going to use uh probably two by six decking so it's uh i i feel like that's going to be fairly sturdy <laughs> we're going to find out i did the load calcs online the best that i could to see if the weight would support what i'm trying to do with it and i think it's going to be just fine but i know it's going to carry my smaller stuff across it my utility vehicle atv and the trailer but what i want to know is once i put quite a bit of weight on the trailer with my tractor or utility vehicle what's that going to do to it so today is the day that i'm going to try to move these beams that i made to the bridge. I've got them on my trailer. Here they are, there's one, two, three. Uh, but I've got three of those I need to move. I've got them on my small trailer and my little tractor and all kinds of tools in here. And we're ready to get started making the trip down to the uh, creek. It's 35 degrees. They're predicting a little bit of rain and snow, so I don't know how much of that I'm gonna get to do today, but right now let's just head down that way and see where we get
I actually have my two by eights by tens laid across. I've got the two by eight by twelves in position. The four by fours are not concreted in the ground. They're just adding support by being screwed in with very large exterior grade screws. What I do ahead of time, before I even set up the two boards that are going to have everything screwed in, I lay them side by side, and as you can see, you can get the dirt off. I've already pre-marked every one of these. This is a one of those uh, beams that I built, I guess you could call it, I don't know. It's a double split hold up joist with a four by four in it, but you can see a wide spot here. You can see how it's a single, another double, single, and another double. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure this is nice and square, and then I'm going to put some support braces on here where I know it's not gonna move anymore. All right, so I measured this from corner to corner. It is 189 and 1 16th. I measured it from that corner to that corner and it is 189 and 1 16th. I went ahead and got one of my beams that I've made in here. I've got it fairly well lined up with this and it's pretty level. I probably have to end up shimming this up just a hair because it's just sitting on the ground. Now over on this side, over here, I've got it lined up and I've got to go, you know, a kick or two in that direction. There we go. And I assume that you can see that I've propped this up on a cinder block, not only to help me because I can't, you see it's down in the ground. It, there's below grade. So in order to be able to get some screws and everything else in this, I really want it above grade temporarily. So cinder block there, cinder block there. If you come on the backside, you'll see what that's gonna do for me. That's allowing me to have it up off the ground so I can get plenty of screws in it. All right, so I've been working about 35, 45 minutes, and I've got my three man-made beams in place. Two, three. I'm going to set two additional 2 by 8 by 12s in those openings. The way I've figured this out, the majority of the weight that I would put on this is going to fall somewhere right in this area on both sides, probably closer to right there on both sides. So I want those beams right where they're at, and I'm not as worried about a support right here, but it, I'm definitely putting one there. So that's what we've got, and we're getting ready to drop the 2 by 8 by 12s in, and then we'll check back, and then we're going to check and make sure we've held square while I've been beating and banging on this thing, and we'll get back and see how we're looking. Sleeting, raining, snowing, so I'm going to have to stop for today. but. I got a lot of what I want to done, done. I got all of these boards in. There's double beams, the single, double, single, double, and the two outsides. Uh, I've got that one reinforced all the way across with the four by fours. And I'm going to come back, reinforce that one laying there, and reinforce that one just laying right there. Just as soon as I get the weather, I'm going to uh, add probably one, two, three, four, five, five more heavy, heavy, heavy landscaping screws up through here. I could show you what I'm using, I'm using these big Brutuses. These claim you don't have to pre-drill. You don't. They will pull a board up. You can see that's almost an inch and a half of clear shaft, and that is the strong drive four inch timber screw. So my wife wants me to come in because she's out in the cold. So it's time to get back down there and start working again though I have to say the weather is is 
okay it's cool it's good for working out here and there's no insects but it's very damp the ground is muddy so i'm having to be really careful and go a back way to get to the bridge i'm working on but i've got the five quarter deck boards on the back of this i've got to cut every single one of these to a consistent length because they're anywhere from a half inch to a quarter inch off so i'm just going to cut them pretty much 10 feet and you might be saying hey those are five quarter deck boards you know that's not strong enough to put a lot of weight on well I'll show you in a minute that I reinforced the bridge. I added more 2x8x10s. So now I have double 2x8 beams everywhere that there will be weight on this. So I'll show you that here in a little bit. I'm getting ready to actually start laying my decking boards, hoping that I can nail them in with the nails that I got without cracking them. I wanted to show you the reinforcing that I did that I'm hoping is gonna make this good enough for five quarter decking. These, as you can see, only have about 12 inches between them. So because this is where wheels off of a utility vehicle or my tractor is gonna land somewhere in here to there. Uh, but a utility vehicle will probably fall right in the middle of these two there and these two here. So I've got double two by eight by 12s I just double checked for square, so I think I'm good to go. Okay, so it's getting dark. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call it quits, but I got a really good start on this. I'm going with about a half an inch gap between them because if they stretch and end up with a full inch gap between them, I'm not worried about it. So that's what we're looking at. So far when I'm walking on this, there is zero flex. Of course, I know I'm not a 1500 pound piece of equipment. It's ridiculously cold out here, as you can see from the hood that I like to pretty much never wear. Uh, but I decided to bring on out some more lumber today and see if I can't get some more of this done. And this is where I left it last night. It's actually snowing right now, but it's so small you just can't see it. But all right, let's get busy. Now I don't have a problem cheating just a hair. So, it's going to get into the mid 30s, mid to lower 30s this evening. And it's sleeting out here. I'm going to have to have something to keep my hands a little bit warm. Now, here comes trouble. <laughs> That's the neighbor's dog. Got a few more boards going on so far. We're approaching the 10 mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is exciting to me because I actually got down like eight boards. In just a couple hours or actually under a couple hours maybe an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half and i have 12 boards down and i have 12 boards left so so far i'm tracking right on schedule and this is feeling mega solid now that these are nailed together everything's just really feeling nice and solid all right so that's going to wrap it up for february 1st monday cold <laughs> well it's time to get started again and of course, as soon as I come down here, <laughs> you know who shows up, <laughs> heaven forbid, he doesn't come see me six times a day, every day of the week. Buddy, are you not cold down in that water? You're killing me. I'm going to just set the camera somewhere. I think I'll set the camera right here and maybe just let the thing run for a while while I move some boards.
show you how cold it is. You can see that that white stuff is ice. <laughs> funny but what ends up happening is your hands get so cold just from touching the dang wood because it's so cold. Okay, so we're at the point in the video where the original film got corrupted and I don't have any more footage to show you where it left off with me laying on the bridge. But I was down to just a few boards left at the point that the video cut off. And what I wanted to show you is I'm back down at the bridge and this is the finished product now that it's completely done. Um, you didn't get to see me work in the gravel. I put a trench all along the outside lip of this and filled it full of gravel so that moisture would run uh, off the face of the board. Uh, I trenched it down through here some and that's covered with gravel so water can run down through there and then the exact same thing on this side. It's gotten full of uh, a little bit of dirt here and there because we've been using it <laughs> with the uh, R-Max utility vehicle but you know it's trenched down through there to keep the moisture off. You can see the gaps now that the thing has really dried out and this is perfectly acceptable because you can walk across it easily. Water gets through it uh, real easy and uh, it doesn't tend to stay between the boards and cause moisture problems with uh, mold or rot. So I ended up with five of those um, double beams that I built. I've driven across it slow. I've parked on it and stayed sitting on it for 20 minutes at a time while I was working on something. So I'm feeling pretty good about how it turned out long term. Who knows? We'll see. I'm going to give it... Uh, maybe another month or two. I think you're supposed to wait quite a while, but I'm gonna give it a couple months in uh, really good hot weather. And then I'm gonna treat it with uh, either some kind of stain or with Thompson's water seal, so that I hope that this will last for a long, long time. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you all will continue watching. And I appreciate you watching this video from Paul's Outdoor Academy. God bless, have a good day, happy bridge building, <laughs> take care.